All right, thanks, Mike. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, excited about this game week coming up. Uh, going to be a, a, a big one for us, certainly, you know, in so many ways. Uh, one, you're playing a, a really good football team on the road, uh, you know, opener to, to Big 12 play. Um, you know, our third game here where we've done some some decent things here the first two weeks, but got a lot of improvements to make. Um, so it's just a, it's a really important game for us. Um, coming off these last two here at home, which have been great. Again, very thankful for our fans, uh, the way they've supported us here the first two weeks. I think our team's done some exciting things, uh, but obviously we've got, we've got a long way to go. Uh, but you've seen some really bright glimpses, I think, on all three sides of the ball. And so I think within the walls, there's a sense of, you know, that we've, you know, you've seen flashes of, you know, how good we think we can be, but we've, we've got to do it more consistently. We've got to continue to grow as a team. And I think we've got a group that's hungry to do that right now. So uh, really excited about this upcoming challenge. Uh, you know, Coach Campbell's done a, a tremendous job at Iowa State. You know, it's really an understatement. Uh, one of the most improved teams, you know, really probably in the country over the last few years. Um, obviously, we had a you know, had a heck of a game with them last year. They had a great season, knocked off a lot of really good football teams, won a lot of games. Um, you know, they just, they, they're they very, very well coached. I mean, all the way around, you know, defensively, you look at them and, you know, I thought they were one of the top defenses uh, in our league and in the country last year. And they really proved that throughout the year. Uh, they're one of the best tackling units that, that we've seen or will face. I thought, I thought probably last year, I thought they were probably the best individually just of just straight tackling. They were probably the best that we saw all year, including Georgia, Ohio State, TCU, all the other fantastic defenses that we played. This group did the best job of tackling. And uh, so they may, they really make you work. They're, they're very smart schematically. Uh, I think their personnel is continuing to improve as they recruit better and better. So they're certainly a challenge uh, defensively. Offensively, again, they moved the ball well. Obviously, the uh, Kemp, the quarterback, came in last year against us and played extremely well. I know he's, uh, you know, we're not sure exactly which quarterback we're going to see again, but that's kind of been the theme this year. So really, really nothing new there. But they they do some very good things schematically that put you in a bind. And then I we're, I think we're going to see one of the best running backs in the conference. Um, you know, their guys really. Really a physical player, does some really, really nice things on film, very difficult to tackle. Uh, so that'll be, you know, slowing him down is going to be a big key to the game, regardless of who's at quarterback. Uh, and again, really looking forward to going on the road. You know, we've, we've, we've loved playing on the road here for the last few years. Um, I think this team's excited to get out there and go, go play somebody else in their own venue. Uh, it's something we've always looked forward to as a program, as coaches. So um, very much looking forward to it. Uh, no, we announced the deal about Rodney. You know, obviously, a, you know, a tough deal. I think we we said in the statement, you know, really all that, all that we felt there. So uh, excited that we've still got him here as a leader, as a captain. He'll still have a big impact on this team, just not on the field. And like I said, we'll have other guys step up and be ready to go. All right, with that, we'll we'll get started. We'll let Al ask the first question. Hey, that's, we just got to do that, right? Wiki, yeah. <laughs> can you tell us exactly? what the knee injury is and are you going to do running back by committee now? Yeah, just talking with Rodney and his family, I think we're just going to leave it at just a knee injury that's going to end the season right now. And they're, you know, they've got a little bit of time here to decide the best course of action for here, you know, from here for his future. So, uh, you know, our people will be very involved with that. Uh, yeah, and then as, as the backs here go forward, it's just going to be based on performance. You know, if we Kind of like we were last year for a large part of the season. If if all those guys are performing well, but nobody is really just totally outplaying the other, then I'm sure we'll play a bunch of those guys. Uh, if we get a guy that gets hot or really starts playing at a high level, we'll, we'll we'll certainly you know feed him more reps and and with that more opportunity. So um, we feel good about those four. You know, it's it's gonna be good for for T.J. Pledger and Kenny Brooks to be able to get more reps, not only game reps, but just throughout the week of practice. That'll be big for their development, and you know, it'll be very it's it, very similar to the beginning of last year, where we felt like we had good players, and we just you know we kept feeding them the ball. Guys had different big games. I think we had three different guys last year rush for 140 plus in a game. Um, so. We got guys that are capable. They've got a really good offensive line blocking for them, and we don't expect any drop off. 
Is there more of a comfort level this year compared to two years ago when you had your two starting running backs out and had Dimitri run the ball? Yeah, this is this is definitely better. Um, you know, not, obviously not not a perfect scenario for us, but no doubt we've the depth that we've you know been able to to bring in in that room is 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 impactful and 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 also too because we don't really have anybody like Dimitri right now so that that could do all those different things so yeah I mean that's nice to know that you again you hate hate to lose a guy like Rodney of course but to still feel as confident as we do in our run game in our back specifically is a good feeling. Um, Lincoln, given Rodney's three career-ending injuries um, that he's had, do you expect that he will be back next year, or, or is that still up in the air? Well, I fully expect that he'll that he'll play. Uh, you know, he'll probably have a decision to make of if it's going to be at this level or the next level, and uh, you know that's. Uh, you know that'll be an interesting one, but one that you know certainly doesn't have to be made now, and and won't be. You know I know you know Rodney and his family. You know I'm sure will you know think everything through, and it'll be a, it'll be, uh, you know I think it'll be one of those things where this kid. I talked to him last night, and just thinking about it for a while, he's the injuries that he's had have been kind of isolated. It's not like the guy's gone out there and had four or five knee injuries on the same one. So I. You know, and the way this kid can rehab the physical specimen that he is, I told him I don't think this injury is going to have any impact on the rest of his career in football, other than it's just going to delay it a few months. I mean, I this guy's so mentally tough, he's so physically gifted, he'll probably come back better. I mean, I I would be shocked if he doesn't. Whoever he's playing for. Brian Lincoln, after the game Saturday, you talked about a conscious effort to. Uh, Focus on special teams. When when did you realize that that needed to be part of your plan moving forward, and maybe what was it that brought you to that point? Uh, just just some of the reflection after the season, you know, getting away, uh, you know, for a few days there after the Rose Bowl, and just kind of taking a step back and trying to look at the whole thing and saying, all right, you know, if we you know we want to continue to put ourselves in this position and, and continue to have a chance to win these big ones, what? What are the you know major steps we need to take as a program, and and then also looking at the the staff structure, you know, looking at kind of you know at my role the first year and where I needed to be better. I mean, in all those areas, that was one thing that kept I kept going back to that you know I had to do better. We as a staff had to do better. Our players had to do better. I mean, it just we needed to really step up there, and so. Uh, yeah, I think uh, like I said that's a lot of people have done it. You know, we're only two games in, but obviously off to a good start. Barry next. Yeah, Lee, do you have a good sense yet of how good your defense is? We said before the year that hey, you'd be tested with these opposing offenses. So, have you been tested, and, and what do you think they are? Yeah, no, I think we've definitely been tested. I mean, I I saw you know what game two I saw the F, you know Chris Robinson threw for I think 470 yards. Um, so, you know, and I think UCLA is going to do some really good things offensively throughout the year, too. So, uh, you know, we'll continue to see great ones. I mean, we know that when we get into this conference. I mean, you're going to see great offenses. There's no doubt about that. So we'll continue to be tested. But I do think I do think we're better in the front seven. I mean, I really I really do. I, th I think we've taken some steps there. Uh, we're going to have to continue to grow. We're going to have to stay healthy. Uh, but I think we're better there, and I think if our young players in the secondary continue to improve the way they are, then then you know we've got a chance. And and like I said, people, I, I still think people on the outside forget that you know we've played a lot of good defensive games here over the last few years. I mean, you don't win three straight Big Twelves and go to the playoff twice playing no defense. You know, we've had some games here and there where we have not played well, and I think sometimes those stand out in people's minds. But we've had some excellent games too, and so. You know, for this group, you know, what you're banking on is the, the mentality, especially up front, that some of the depth, some of the talent uh, that we have defensively, that that's going to allow us to do that more consistently. We've done it, you know, two games in a row here, but we need to go do it again here uh, against Iowa State. Yeah, Lincoln, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Matt Campbell said today, uh, Kyle Kemp, day to day, more day to day than it was. Uh, do you have a sense of how that's going to shake out and what, how you're going to prepare for that? Uh, no, no sense how it's going to shake out. I mean, he's you know either going to be ready to play or he's not. Um, you know, I know they've got a backup that they feel really good about. You know, it's had a little bit of game experience too. So, um, you know, I think they, I think they, 
you know, they are who they are, you know, and, and we all are. I mean, you know, you've, each guy may have a little bit different talent here or there, um, and there may be a few things new here or there, but you've just got to be ready to adjust. And uh, so we're going to have to be able to do that defensively, um, regardless of who they play. And, uh, you know, if we can play sound assignment football like we have and fly to the ball, then, I, you know, I, I like our chances of playing well. Lincoln, did you, when you look back at the last year's loss here to Iowa State, did you learn anything from it that maybe you'd do differently this week in preparation for them? Oh, I don't know really specifically to them. You know, I think it was a big moment for us of just, you know, playing as well as we did early, you know, and then having a couple opportunities to put the game away, you know, and we and we didn't do it. And, I mean, if you let a good team like that hang around, you give them opportunities every now and then you're going to get beat, and we did. And so, uh, I mean, they were, you know, I, a lot of people probably didn't believe it before our game, but obviously after our game and they went on and beat TCU and several other really good football teams, I mean, people figured out pretty quick that these guys are good, and uh, and they are good. And so... Um, no, I, I, I mean, there was things we didn't do well within the game, calls you didn't like, but I don't know if it was definitely, you know, if it was something that you say, all right, against them, we got to, you know, specifically do this better. I mean, we've got to play better overall, and if we get a, you know, if we do happen to get a chance to put them away, a good team like that, you better take advantage of it. Jake was next. Up here. Yeah, Lincoln, uh, uh, last year after the Iowa State game, you know, Rodney kind of became the primary back for you guys. And I don't think there's any doubt you guys uh, went to another level offensively the rest of the year. Uh, so when you look at kind of this team going forward, what's going to be the key um, to, uh, to to replacing Rodney? Uh, is it going to be a combination of the other backs and then the rest of the offense? Yeah, I mean, I just – I know it, you guys look at it like that on the outside. I don't look at it as replacing Rodney. I mean, now you just you, you you put some different guys in there, and then you just and you go play. And so and those guys have played a bunch of ball. And so I mean, it's I mean even before the injury, I I didn't feel different when Rodney was in there opposed to Trey Sermon or Marcellus. I mean, yeah, there's all they all had things that maybe this guy does these a little bit better, or that guy does these a little bit better, but we still. We still just run our offense, you know, and, and do what we expect to do. And so, um, certainly, when you lose a great player, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, everybody's got to step their game up a little bit, no question. You know, there's gonna have you're gonna have to have different guys step up and make those plays. But I, I, I know our guys will, and so, and I think our whole offense feels that. So we, like I said, we hate it from Rodney, but I don't. Our, our expectations aren't any different. Link, what do you? Your assessment of? Of Kyler throwing through two games, he's thrown the ball really well, really well. I mean, he's thrown. He missed a couple of short ones in the flat uh, Saturday, and other than that, I mean, his throws were, I mean, spot on. Deep balls, intermediate sidelines. I mean, everything. So he's throwing the ball great. Uh, I think he's. I think he'll continue to get more settled in with his decisions. You know, he had to. He had to make a lot more decisions in this game, this last game, and uh, and the majority of them, I think, he had. You know, we graded him out. He had, you know, two two uh, decisions that we wanted back. And other than that, you know, he really he really played well. Brandon, do you feel like kind of you've been more aggressive? I guess it, to us, it looks kind of like you've been more aggressive overall this year on defense, in, opposed to years past. Do you think that it's kind of the personnel that kind of allows you to do that, or is it just kind of Mike just feels a little bit more comfortable with? Who he has on the field? Yeah, I think a little bit of both, honestly. I think feeling, you know, feeling confident in your secondary, you know, feeling confident in in the the front seven that that when you do try to dial things up, that guys are going to get there and make the plays, which they've been doing. Uh, having confidence that you know if they have a you know if we call it and it doesn't work out, that we you know, we can still rally and make a open field one on one tackle, or guys can rally to the ball and and you don't just get gashed. Um, so, and then I think too when you when you add athleticism and talent like we have, it's just going to look faster and more explosive just because simply these guys are faster and more explosive. And so uh, I think we're, we're attacking, we're, we're triggering. You know, Mike and, and the guys have done a great job so far of building it around our, our players and what they can do. So, uh, you, know, it's, uh, you know, it's clicking well right now. Yeah, how's Austin Kendall doing, and what are his chances of being available on Saturday? He's doing good. Uh, you know, we'll see how he progresses throughout the week. But I, 
Um, had a great week last week, you know, really improved probably even a little bit quicker than we would have thought. So uh, I think he's, he's cer certainly, uh, at least this, er this, uh, this early in the week, certainly looks to be an option this weekend. Right. Talking with Mark Jackson following the game, he admitted there were times last couple of years he was kind of down on mm -hmm. himself. It was just one game, but how big of a confidence booster can Saturday be? For him? Yeah, big, big. I mean, it's it's no different than Oboe's story a few years ago. You know, there were times when Oboe, you know, wanted to leave here um, or thought, you know, playing behind Devontae Bond and Stryker and all those guys thought, well, I may never get my opportunity. And, uh, you know, and then he got some confidence and really took off um, both on the field and, and off the field. And so, you know, Mark's starting to grow. He's starting to mature. Um, he's getting an opportunity. He made a lot of plays the other day. Still had a few mistakes um, that you expect. But, you know, have 10 tackles and be involved in several, you know, TFLs uh, is the kind of player he can be and the kind of player we need him to be. So he's getting a great opportunity, and I think he's – He's really getting more comfortable. Mike's getting more comfortable with him, and uh, you know. But I, I think he's still scratching the surface on how good he really can be. After the game, it just seemed like you know the guys were really down because Rodney got hurt. It seems like he's that important of a of a player to you. So talk about that that dynamic of how the guys either rally or how they come back and how much Rodney can help that going forward. Yeah, no, they were definitely down. I mean, there's there's no doubt, you know, as word kind of started to leak through that, you know, that he of of what they thought the injury was at that time and 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 later confirmed that, you know, no question, you know, a team leader probably you know, the biggest individual team leader on the entire team. So no no doubt it it hurt the team, but you know, there's a difference in when it happens in the beginning and then, you know, the, kind of the shock factor a little bit for everybody. And then, you know, after the fact, once guys can come to terms with it, see that, you know, talk to him, see that he's okay. Rodney's able to be, you know, still around our team, be a leader, be the captain that he's going to continue to be for us. I, I think it'll be a rallying point for this team. Uh, and like I said on the conference call this morning, I, Rodney would have it no other way. I mean, if it was anybody else, you know, that's how Rodney would be. So that's how we all need to be for him. Okay, John McKelvey. Uh, Lincoln, so last year you guys lost a couple of leads uh, late in games. And this year so far, I mean, you guys have kind of taken care of business and put teams away. Is there anything you learned as a coach? Do you think your players learned anything from those experiences? And what do you think has contributed to kind of putting teams away so far this year? Um, yeah, we're two games in. Uh, the two teams we lost leads to last year were pretty good teams. You know, we had we had a run on them. They had some runs on us. I mean, that's gonna that's gonna happen when you play really good teams. I I don't know that as we went back and really reviewed it. I don't know that we felt like there was anything specifically that our our players or staff just did really poorly in the two games that we lost related to having a lead and then losing it. There's of course, when you have a stretch where you don't play well, you're going to say, you know, wish I'd have called this player or wish this player would have done this or whatever the case may be. You're always going to have that whether you win 60 to nothing or lose or, or lose 60 to nothing. But I don't know that we felt like any of it was necessarily related to, you know, having a lead and then all of a sudden we just stopped playing well or, or you know, start doing a lot of things wrong. I mean, we... We lost two good football teams, but that's in the past. That's a that's a that was last year's team. This year's team is, you know, growing, learning. You know, we have been able to separate some, although we didn't separate as fast uh, Saturday as as I would have hoped, especially from the offensive side. So uh, we got a lot of growing to do, but we're going to continue to play good teams. We're going to, you know, not all the games are going to go like this. You know, we're going to have some tight games. We're going to have some games where people make some runs on us, and we're going to have to be able to respond. Side. <clears throat> yeah, you just called Rodney the biggest individual team leader probably on the team. And even if you have a team of leaders, it would seem to take some time to gel around a similar presence. So are you looking at a dynamic that will play itself out going forward? Or, I mean, is, is, that a, is that a thing that needs replacing, you know? I don't, I don't think so, just because it's not like uh, – you know, it's not like in the NFL and we, we cut a guy or traded a guy. You know, I mean, he's still he's still here. You know, he's still alive. And uh, so he's, you know, he's going to be around our guys a bunch. He's going to be around our team. He'll travel with us. I mean, he's going to – the only thing he won't do is just run out on the field with them. And so he can, 
he can he he can and I, just knowing him I know he will still have a large impact on this team so you're not totally replacing that uh, but do other guys have to step up in a leadership role maybe more with somebody like him gone that's that's probably fair to say as well I don't want to just totally discount it either Lincoln, you, you mentioned earlier how tough uh, Rodney is mentally. He's been through big injury rehab twice. What did you see out of him on the mental side of things that you think will you'll, you'll be seeing again with this rehab? Well, I mean, he was obviously, you know, extremely disappointed as we all were after. But just talking to him yesterday just seems to have no hesitation. You know, I mean, he's... It, it happened, you know, it's it's part of it, but he's just he knows the he knows the blueprint, you know, he knows how this goes. And I think he I think this maybe would have been different and I, that may not be fair to say, but I think this maybe would have been different had this happened at the same time last year, you know, where he probably proved a lot to himself last year. I mean, what he and he should have. I mean, what he did the second half of the season, I mean, we're all We've always been confident in his abilities, but I mean, you could argue he, he might have been the best player in the country last year, the second half of the season. Um, I mean, he was tremendous. And so I think he knows now for sure the level he can play at. And uh, I think he's very confident that he's going to come back better than ever. Yeah, Lincoln, uh, uh, in their first years, uh, CD and, and Marquise had some great moments for you. Um, how do you think they are playing in their second years here? And uh, do you think that they are and can elevate their game to another level? Yeah, they're they're off to a good start. Uh, they're both more consistent right now. Uh, they're both making some some very competitive catches, you know. And they're they're guys that they're going to separate from people, you know, most people at times. And and you know you expect everybody to make those, but if they can also make some of the more contested ones, like CD's touchdown, or you know, my favorite one that Marquise has had this year was probably the. Uh, one down here in the uh, south end zone where you know Kyler kind of had all day and threw him a curl route kind of over the middle and it was very contested. The one that he cramped up on, you know, it was an extremely contested catch. And so you've seen them kind of grow in that area where if they can make those, they're going to be they're going to be pretty tough to defend. And so and they're both playing pretty well, you know, after the catch. Uh, so yeah, no, it's two good weapons. It really, really throw A.D. Miller in that mix. I mean, it's three good weapons that we have on the outside right now that are going to give a lot of people trouble. Back to John. Um, Lincoln, the, you answered the question about uh, Kyler throwing the football. He's throwing the football, making the reads, the decisions. How's he handling the other parts of being the, the quarterback at the University of Oklahoma, uh, comporting himself in the media, representing himself on campus, uh, interacting with teammates and stuff like that. How's that going and what do you want to see more out of him? How do you want to see him grow? I think he's doing a great job. He's kind of he's kind of taking it as it goes a little bit. I don't see him really forcing the issue, trying to overdo anything. You know, he's 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 still himself. Um, um, you know, I don't see him as much on campus, but he's doing very well academically. Um, you know, no issues there. I mean, he's, he's which he, he has here, that hasn't ever been an issue. Uh, yeah, he seems to be handling it well. I mean, it seems, he seems natural for it. It seems easy and smooth for him. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't feel like, in a lot of ways, working with him doesn't feel like he's doing it for the first time. And, and in reality, he's, he's not, you know, it's a little different situation, but he's, He's been in a lot of big moments with spotlight on him kind of throughout his life. So he's he's learned to handle it pretty well. Joey Creed's first start the other day. How did he grade out when you guys look back? Uh, Creed. Creed yeah, Creed played well. He did. Uh, he had uh, just a you know, a couple of plays that we would want back, but I mean that's that's kind of everybody, but he was he was good physically, you know, really showed up. I thought he Settled in more and more as the game went on. He did a great job communicating with our guys. Uh, we were on the same page, uh, you know, you know, for the majority of the game, you know, at a pretty high level. So, uh, for a guy's first start playing against a, a talented front like them and all the different ways that they challenged us, I thought he handled it very well. Kyler was so good, he won the Big 12 honor and a national honor. Yet I'm sure when you go back and look at it, you see a couple of things, a couple of batted balls where guys were open and a couple of swing passes. Can you address uh, moving forward with him, working with him on those things? Yeah, he missed the two two balls in the flat that, you know, pretty routine for him. That He, he didn't miss them by much, but we need him to be, be better on those. I mean, the batted balls happen. You know, I, we've... 
those are those, those just happen and uh you know so you just you kind of live with those i mean the, a lot of times it's it's fairly streaky you know people want to make a big deal about a guy being you know, 5'11", or a guy being 6'5", I've seen a ton of 6'5 guys get them batted all over the place. And some of it's some of it's finding the windows, and also some of it is just blind luck. So we'll make sure Kyler goes to church this week. Back with Jason on the right. Lincoln, do you, do you expect the level of aggression and blitzing to keep up once you start facing more experienced quarterbacks down the road? Um, as far as talking from our defensive perspective? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I just think it's week to week, you know, you just gotta, you gotta be able to put together the plan. Um, and so I think for us, the key would be whether we're blitzing, whether we're playing coverage, whatever we're doing, that we keep up the aggression that we've had. And then when we do choose to blitz and pressure people, we've got to, we've got to make the place happen. You got to get there. You got to take advantage of it, especially with like, with, like you said, playing some of the offenses, some of the teams that we're getting ready to play here in the next stretch. So, um, I think we, I think it can be a weapon for us, uh, but we're going to have to be able to do both well. Yeah, how do you feel Kyler's handling the when to run, when not to, and how is he handling like the aggressiveness part of it, getting as much as he can? Oh, he's handling it great. I mean, he's been extremely patient in the pocket. Honestly, probably a little more than maybe I would have guessed at this point. He's been extremely patient. Uh, Trust our linemen and our backs on their blitz pickups. He stood in there and made throws. Uh, I, I don't know that he's gotten out of the pocket one time in two games where I came back and film and said, hey, you, you really should have sat in there this time. So, um, And I think he's, he's done a good job of, of kind of knowing when he needs to, to lower his head and go get the tough extra yards in certain situations and then also being smart and not taking unnecessary hits. So I think he's, uh, he's done very well with both those things. Were your thoughts about Kenneth Murray, game one, eating have a tackle? Yep. Were your thoughts about him Saturday? Some of that was schematic with FAU, just the way we were, were fitting things. That was some of that was schematic, but he did he played much better this week. I mean he this was probably the best game that he's played uh, to date as an Oklahoma Sooner. You know, played he played in control, you know, which is a big deal for him. You know, he's so twitchy and fast and explosive that He's, it's, it's almost like a quarterback with a big arm. He's learning when to use it and then when to kind of be patient and let the plays develop and then trigger. And he was really good with that the other day. His eyes were good, uh, tackled extremely well, but was very much in control the whole day. So uh, I, think, I think Saturday was a glimpse of what we feel like we could have in the future with him. Brandon. Yeah, uh, you guys talked about before the season replacing Ovo and kind of not really feeling like you had a guy that was obviously as good blitzing as him. First two games, Chris Bolton has gotten in the backfield quite a bit. I know he's a different position and not the jack backer, but do you feel like you've kind of found a guy that is at least capable blitzer? No question. He's always been, for the last several years, he's always been one of the best pass rushers that we've had. Um, I think the thing that's different in his game right now is he's gotten better at all the other stuff. Um, you know, kind of like in early in Oboe's career, you brought him up. He was just a great situational pass rusher, but any of the other stuff, you just held your breath. And now with Curtis, he's learning to be better, uh, you know, in his run fits, be better in his pass drops, understanding formations and adjustments, all the other things that linebackers have to do. He's he's always been a lead at triggering and making plays. So, I mean, that's, that's always kind of been his ace in the hole. So uh, he's gotten better at the other things, which has allowed us to play him more. And you're, you know, you see him making the plays that we've uh, we've expected him to make. James, you know, Lincoln. Before the year, you said that right after the season, you made a decision that you wanted to get more aggressive and do things on special teams. We've seen that the first two games. Is this is this what you envisioned? You know, when you made the moves and decisions on special teams. It it, it is. No, it is. It's. Uh, you know, you never know if it's how quickly things are going to come to fruition. But I, I felt, you know, once we all sat down, you know, kind of laid out the plan, uh, you know, got the staff situated the way we did, I felt confident in our plan. And I, we really talked to players through spring and through camp that, look, we, we got to be better for you guys first on it. And we're going to lay out the best plan we possibly can. And then you guys are going to need to buy into it now with not necessarily seeing the results. We don't have any results for you right now. We're not going to have those till September. So if you guys will buy in now, we'll have some results. And it's, it's been good. Um, so 
but the, the team, give the team credit. They bought in, you know, they have. They have, our, our special teams drills, special teams time has been as competitive and active as certainly anywhere that I've ever been. So proud of our, proud of our emphasis and glad that our guys have been able to see some nice success on it. Okay, we're gonna take two more, John Hoover and then Jake Carter. With uh, conference play interrupting non-conference play, I'm sure that's not a big deal, but you've got, uh, it's a little bit on the rare side. You've got Army up ahead, which runs a unique offense. Do you have enough? Have you had built in enough prep time ahead of uh, this game? Because you don't want to spend any prep time on Army, obviously, this week. Um, or, or is that something that just takes care of itself next week? Yeah, a little bit of that. I mean, it's uh, you know certainly cer something that we've discussed, and we certainly all our focus right now is going to be on Iowa State. Uh, but you know, when we get to that point, we'll you know we we feel good about our plan to be prepared for Army as well. Yeah, Lincoln, uh, <clears throat> how much uh, of being a play caller is about um, you know, reacting to situations, adjusting to, to personnel? I mean, you've had a number of those situations come up, whether it was you got P. Ryan and Mixon, you got to run the ball more, now you got to replace a Heisman Trophy winner, now you're, you're, your top running back is out. Um, you know, for you, do you enjoy those challenges of kind of remaking uh, your offense, and how big a part of being a successful play caller is about reacting to those situations? Yeah, no, I think it's – I think play calling certainly is some of reacting, but I think it's also your planning and your design throughout the week, you know, just purely game planning, you know, not only schematically what you're going to do, but all right, if this guy goes down for us or if this guy goes down for them, you know, one, one domino falling can change a lot of different things. And you've got to be, you and the staff have got to be ready to react quickly um, and kind of be able to go through all those different situations. and. I know I've gone back to it a lot, but I just think that's where our experience together as a staff here for the last now four, you know, four years is comes into play. You know, we know how we want to adjust to people. We know what we're going to do if any player on our offense gets hurt, is out for an extended period of time. Um, but it, it's certainly a factor. You got to know the personnel. You got to know what your guys can do. Um, and yeah, I think you always enjoy finding a way to move the ball. You don't always love it being in a situation where you've lost a good player. But it wasn't a cat, but it was close. Um, but uh, but you but you you understand that's part of the deal, and uh, you understand that's part of our job. And so uh, yeah, no, I the adjustments throughout the game are always something you look forward to. Yep, there we go. All right.